Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Today's jet engines are technological marvels with complexities, which is why they require comprehensive testing before they are ready to be put on the aircraft. Engines are put through an extensive testing program right after they are manufactured. To ensure that an engine is efficient, it is put through three stages of functional testing, including static, stationary operating, and flight tests. During the static tests, all the engine systems, including hydraulic, electrical, and cooling systems, are checked. The engine is then mounted on a stand and rotated at operating speed to conduct the stationary operating test, during which the performance parameters of the engine are measured. Finally, the engine is mounted on a testbed aircraft to conduct flight tests and examine various operating and environmental conditions, such as extreme cold, high altitudes, and other flying conditions. Yeah, we told him you were coming. We didn't know if you wanted anybody in the tower. The F-16 Fighting Falcon is a multi-role fighter aircraft that requires constant maintenance and repairs to remain efficient in air combat. Most maintenance could be performed with the engine installed in the jet. However, for certain major maintenance, the entire engine must be removed. Before removing the engine from the aircraft, the maintenance team disarms the aircraft. Each weapon is carefully removed from the F-16's wings so that the maintenance can be performed safely. Once the aircraft is disarmed, the crew separates the engine from the airframe. It takes an hour to remove the engine from the airframe, and it is slowly towed away from the aircraft. The F-16 engine, when turned on, produces huge flames and noise. Therefore, it is tested within a hush house. A hush house is an enclosed, noise-suppressed facility used for testing aircraft systems, including propulsion, mechanics, electronics, pneumatics, and others. These sites help the engineers test engines and other aircraft systems under actual load conditions. Hush houses are large enough to accommodate an entire aircraft, so the engine can also be tested without removing it from the aircraft. <laughs> However, the aircraft must be restrained by holdback devices to resist the engine thrust. Yeah, it's, uh, it's the F-16 takes off in a traditional way. The aircraft rushes down the runway and reaches takeoff speed in a matter of seconds. With a quick pull on the stick, 
It takes off with its nose almost pointing vertically toward the sky. During flight, the pilot controls the aircraft using an armrest mounted side stick controller, an engine throttle, and conventional rudder pedals. The U.S. Air Force F-16 Fighting Falcons are deployed worldwide for various training exercises and missions. During the Arctic Challenge exercise, ACE 2021, the F-16s landed at the Kallax Air Base in Sweden to conduct various flying activities. The goal of the Arctic Challenge exercise was to train the air forces of participating nations so they could safely and effectively conduct aerial combat. This exercise strengthened interoperability and combined response capabilities between the participating nations. Sometimes it becomes necessary to deploy multiple F-16s to areas with extremely cold conditions. In order to avoid damage to the aircraft, much of the snow that builds up throughout the night must be removed by hand. Even then, it cannot be removed completely. Therefore, the crew uses various equipment and machinery to remove the snow. The aircraft's engine intakes are equipped with special padded covers to prevent snow buildup. Moreover, Aircraft equipment that could be affected by snow is removed and brought indoors. The F-16s are fast and agile, requiring longer runways to land safely. However, for shorter or temporary runways, the F-16s are stopped using Back 12. Generally, the Back 12 consists of a cable extended across the runway, which is connected to energy absorbers, usually mechanical and hydraulic brakes. When the tail hook catches a cable, the energy absorbers slow down the airplane. Consequently, a portable version of the Back 12, known as the Mobile Aircraft Arresting System, MASS, is used at temporary or distant airfields. Such a system comes with two trailers housing different components of the arresting system. These trailers can be quickly deployed and are equipped with the same energy absorbing features as the Back 12. Like the Back 12, the mass also contains steel made arresting cables that are stretched across the runway to catch the aircraft. As it is a mobile system, it can easily be moved around and used at places such as training grounds, temporary airfields, and forward operating bases. Aircraft carriers can carry, arm, deploy, and recover fighter jets such as F-16. They have a full-length flight deck and serve as a seagoing airbase. The 
The number of aircraft that an aircraft carrier can accommodate depends on the type of carrier and the aircraft being carried. For instance, a Nimitz-class aircraft carrier can accommodate up to 130 F-A-18 Hornets or 85 to 90 aircraft of different types. However, current numbers are typically 64 aircraft. There is a unique jet repair shop at the rear end of an aircraft carrier where the maintenance crews perform inspections, maintenance, and repairs of aircraft engines. The maintenance technicians are well-versed in engine maintenance and engine repair. They ensure the engine operates at peak performance directly affecting the aircraft's operational capabilities. Within the jet shop, each task is performed while following strict safety and quality standards, ensuring the readiness and safety of the carrier's aircraft fleet. The maintenance of an engine covers everything, from aircraft engines to propellers and rotor systems. When an engine is brought into the repair shop, the maintenance technicians use specialized tools and equipment to perform an induction check of the engine. After this process, the maintenance crew initiates the engine reassembly process. The technicians put the engine back together following strict protocols. The reassembly process takes around three to four days, depending on the crew's availability and the nature of the work. After the reassembly, the engine undergoes an important step called operating verification. Before and after the engine runs, a thorough visual inspection is conducted to check for any signs of leaks, loose components, or structural damage. This entire process takes almost three hours if everything goes well. However, if an issue arises, it might take several days to troubleshoot and terminate the problem. When the engine is deemed operational, the maintenance crew hands it over to the squadron. Rigorous engine testing and maintenance are critical to ensuring the performance, reliability, and safety of fighter jets like the F-16. Whether it's conducting tests in sophisticated hush houses or performing repairs on aircraft carriers, each step is vital for operational readiness of the engine. Regular checks and comprehensive performance evaluations not only extend the life of these advanced engines, but also guarantee that they meet the demanding standards required for mission success, regardless of the environment. Ensuring top-notch engine health is essential for both safety and effectiveness in modern aviation. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.